We'll dive right into the first public hearing of the House investigation into the January 6th Capitol attack, which kicks off tonight in prime time. And aide tells NBC News the committee will present evidence never seen before that shows former President Donald Trump at the center of a coordinated effort to overturn the 2020 election. The aide says tonight's testimony will serve as sort of an opening statement and that the information we hear could go beyond the testimony we hear from live witnesses. As we've reported, this evening's witnesses include a filmmaker who was embedded with the far-right group, the Proud Boys, and a Capitol Police officer who was injured in the attack. The New York Times reports the committee will also play video excerpts of the testimony from Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump given behind closed doors, although it's unclear if those interviews will be featured tonight. So a big start tonight in prime time. Right. Probably strategy for a reason to place it where most Americans can see it. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, Willie, of course, this is going to be fascinating because we will uh, see new evidence, new testimony we haven't seen before. What's most fascinating, to me at least, is I, 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 want, I want the testimony from, not from Trump's opponents, not from people who have been against Donald Trump his entire life, the people who were on the inside, the people who worked for him, the people who stayed with him despite the fact uh, that they had grave concerns from time to time, the people who were with him on January the 6th and reported to, well, just the heinous things that, that he did. We've gotten a little snippet here or there about how he would run in while the Capitol is being besieged. He would he would actually run in and he would watch on TV uh, in the dining room off the Oval Office. Uh, and he would rewind to find the most violent parts and he would replay them over and over again. We've had Republican senators say that he was giddy watching the violence. We're going to actually do what lawyers when when they start deposing people and they send out interrogatories and they start piecing records together, we're going to get a clear TikTok of events. And I do think the evidence is going to be fairly overwhelming that not only did Donald Trump want the rioting to go on, that he was actively cheering for it and he did not want it to stop. Absolutely. And I think what's key here, this committee has signaled there will be, as you said, new evidence. We will hear from new witnesses. It's a story over the last year and a half. Americans feel like they know there's been so much documented video evidence of what happened. We've seen so much media reporting about this. We feel like we know the story. But what the committee is telling us is there is more to it. And it may draw, a, as you say, a direct line right into the White House. Uh, and Jonathan Lemire, you've been looking at this. You've written a book about the big lie that's coming out next month. Um, what do you believe the committee sees as its job tonight? We know it's not going to be broadcast, for example, on Fox News, an audience that may need to hear the truth about this. It'll be on their, one of their other networks with many fewer viewers. But how do they reach the American public? What do they think they have to do tonight? And they know this is their best chance. The first night, the primetime hearing is the moment where they will likely have the largest share of the nation's attention than they will at any point during these hearings. An aide talked to reporters yesterday, an aide to the committee, said, address the point we just opened with. This is an event that we have seen so much about. It's been documented with hundreds upon hundreds of hours of video witness accounts, but they still feel like they have new things, something that's going to shake the American people a little bit here as they make their case, as they make their case as to what happened in the run up to that day, the lies told by Donald Trump and his allies, enabled by Republicans in Congress, enabled by the conservative media, and then, of course, his actions that day. And as a postscript, they aim to have something that just never can happen again. That's their central mission here. And tonight will be will be stark, it'll be telling and likely powerful. Uh, we will hear from a documentary filmmaker who was embedded with the Proud Boys uh, that day and has new footage of those hate groups and what they did, but also we'll hear from a Capitol Police officer, the first Capitol Police officer who was injured that day, who suffered a traumatic brain injury, who could give a firsthand harrowing account of the anger and violence perpetrated by those people we're seeing here, these Trump supporters 
who stormed the Capitol. This will go on for a number of hearings over a number of days, but they feel like tonight they have to have a big, important start, and they think they've got a compelling narrative to tell that might even change a few months. Yeah, this is the opening act, Jonathan. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And what we're seeing right there is going to be part of a story that uh, most Americans are aware of. They're not aware of all the details. But, you know, you'd have to think that the key to what happens tonight and ongoing through these hearings is the ability to tell a story. Does this committee have the ability to tell a story? Americans love a story, but you need a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the two key components we would hope, people should hope that they, show, that they tell us, is A, Donald Trump's participation in this. Did he really participate in egging on this crowd? How did he do it? And B, uh, you know, did he use his power then as president to affect the instruments of government? Did he use his own personal power as president of the United States to really break the law and extend his rule of, as president? Did he corrupt the system? And that's going to be a story that I think everybody should be interested in, Mika. And Mika and mm -hmm. Joe, the usual cast of Republican suspects are already discrediting the committee, saying they're not going to be listening, they won't be paying attention, that it's a sham committee, that they didn't have enough Republicans on it, et cetera, et cetera. But the fact of the matter is 1,000 depositions and interviews, 98 subpoenas, 136,000 pages of records uh, is what this committee has poured through. That is the evidence they have, and they'll distill it all beginning tonight in prime time. And again, wow. the critical thing, there you go. so many of those records coming from inside the White House. Right. Hey, Mr. President, the call's coming from inside the House. You have Kevin McCarthy, remember, Kevin McCarthy, who unloaded mm -hmm. his text messages. We found out about Don Jr. We found out about Sean Hannity. We found out about other people who were saying one thing publicly but privately. They were <laughs> panicked because they knew this was absolutely devastating. And what did they do? They were begging Donald Trump to stop, stop. this. Now, yep. why, why in the world were they calling Donald Trump instead of, oh, I don't know, uh, Mookie Betts? <laughs> well, because Mookie uh, Betts Mookie. couldn't stop, Mookie couldn't stop the <sighs> riots. That's right. Well, in why fact, weren't they calling the police? Kevin McCarthy couldn't stop the riots. Yeah, why wouldn't they call the police and say stop the... They knew that Donald Trump, Donald Trump's children, Donald Trump's closest allies in the media, they knew that Donald Trump could stop this. And people on the inside were telling them, not only does he not want to stop this, he's actually encouraging yeah. it. He's sending emails when Mike Pence is in danger to try to rev the crowd up even more, to try to make these riots turn deadlier. And so we're going to see that. I, I talked to somebody close to the committee who said that some of these depositions, Mika, took on almost a confessional tone. Mm. And for whatever reason, a lot of people out there say, well, they were probably just trying to cover their tracks right. because they didn't want to be associated with an insurrection, because who would? Uh, but there's some people genuinely shocked by how unpatriotic the person they were working for was. How, how, I don't know why they'd be shocked by that, but what, 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 just how he was a valueless void and that he was perfectly willing to watch the government go up and smoke, perfectly willing to watch Congress get trashed, for perfectly himself. willing to watch police officers get brutalized for himself. For himself to try and change the, the results of an try election, which is so election. undemocratic. But yeah. I think you've really zeroed in on one of the key points here, and that is why would these people all call Donald Trump? And it, it makes it very clear that Trump is the only one who could have stopped this. Joining us.